First off, this is an amazing turnout, I think far bigger than we expected, uh, and we, we really do appreciate the involvement uh, in town activities like this. So I just wanted to start by saying thank you to everyone who showed up tonight. Um, I think we have an exciting night planned uh, to share a lot of good information. Uh, so appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to come be with us. So uh, just a quick introduction, my name's Eric Moore. Uh, I am the president of Bridgewater's Town Council. I am also a longtime uh, resident of Bridgewater. I grew up here, I went to school here, uh, went away for school and then came back uh, to start my family and raise my kids in Bridgewater. Um, so I have seen many versions of Bridgewater over the years and I'm really excited to share I think the upcoming version that, that we're envisioning with all of you tonight. Um, I volunteered for the Town Council a few years ago. Prior to that, I hadn't participated in any sort of public government. Um, but in Bridgewater, I saw the need to get involved uh, to help some of these ideas move forward. Um, and I think like all of you who have showed up tonight, I care a lot about the town. Um, and I want to see us tackle some of the difficult challenges that have been ahead of us for a little while. Things like improved roadways um, and consistent water and then more importantly tonight uh, a new vision for the revitalizing the downtown i think to me that is sort of the start the spark that is going to get a lot of these other things moving um, and i do want to share a little bit of background about sort of how we got to today so over the past decade uh, volunteers from our community have gotten together uh, and they've reviewed all of the various plans that Bridgewater has produced over the years. We have housing plans, we have roadway plans, we have uh, Bridgewater you know, uh, State University has a plan. They looked at all those plans and they pulled them together and they created something called a master plan. And that master plan is Bridgewater's sort of roadway to success. It is how do we take all of these very different ideas uh, and get them into one sort of common uh, strategy that we can start to execute. Uh, so we created, our volunteers from town, created something called a master plan. And they presented that to the Bridgewater Town Council. Um, and the Bridgewater Town Council took the ideas from that and turned that into a vision for Bridgewater. Uh, and sort of what we thought the community could become and sort of what we thought needed to happen again, get us there. And tonight, uh, we're starting to take the next step. So tonight we're talking about how do we take those ideas and those visions and all those years of plans and actually turn them into action. How do we do something to push those ideas forward? Um, and so uh, I think right now our idea is to start with the downtown, although many of those other ideas are, are actively being worked on too. Um, and the way that I often talk to people about the, the downtown is I say, if, if you are like me and you've driven through the center of the downtown and you've looked around and said, you know, someone really needs to do something about this, <laughs> right? You are in the right meeting, first off, that's, that's tonight. Uh, but I would also say you are the someone. Like, you know, the way that towns work, the way that communities work, is that people get involved and excited about the things they care about. Um, and so for those of you that care about the downtown, uh, you know, we, we want to bring you into the conversation that we've been having and use your energy to help us, help us push that forward. Um, so I would say uh, tonight, our goal is to share all of the information that we have with you. Um, and when we say someone needs to do something, we want to share with you our version of what we think that something is. Um, I'm sure there are other versions of what that something should be. Um, but tonight, we want to start that conversation. We want to share with you everything we know, share our version of that something, answer questions about our version of that something that needs to happen, um, but also hear your feedback. Right? What do you think needs to happen? How do we take a downtown area that over time is sort of, you know, kind of headed in a direction that does not represent the heart of our community, and how do we turn it back into something that is the heart of our community? And the idea is if you get that heart pumping and sparked, um, all of these other things that we talk about doing start to happen. It is the spark that makes the rest of the town kind of plan come together. Uh, and so with that, uh, I maybe point out just a couple of logistics for the evening tonight. Uh, our town manager is here and our assistant town manager. We have many members of the town staff here as well. You'll see name tags. Uh, many of the town counselors are here tonight as well. Uh, we also have name tags. Ours have this sort of like pink highlight on them. Uh, and I encourage you to come in and talk to us and share your ideas, share what you like, share what you don't like. Uh, we are here tonight uh, to uh, hear your ideas uh, and, and get your thoughts. 
And so with that, um, I will hand this over uh, to Bob Ruley. Bob Ruley is our Director of Economic and Community Development, and he's going to guide us through the discussion tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. So the, the schedule, as you can see, we just had some opening remarks. I'm going to do a short presentation. Shouldn't take any more than three, three and a half hours. And then we're going to open the stations up. Some of you have already been to some of the stations. This is an opportunity for you to ask some questions, offer comments. Uh, we've got professional staff from both inside Town Hall and outside Town Hall that can listen to what you have to say, answer the questions that you have, take your feedback, and we really encourage you to do that. So how the event is going to work, as I said, I'm going to do some quick remarks, it's a short presentation. We're going to open it up to the stations. In addition to those four stations in the center of the room, we're going to have uh, our small business pilot program representative. We have a raffle uh, for you to guess how many parking spaces there are in Town Hall. Nicole, who's waving, will be there. Um, there's not a right answer. We're just curious as to what you think. And we're going to just pick a name at random, and you'll receive a $75 gift card that was donated by Roach Brothers. So before I get into it too much, I'd like to ask a couple of questions. So show of hands, who has lived in Bridgewater for less than 10 years? OK. How about less than 20? More than 20. OK, so the majority of you have been here for a little while. And we might recognize each other, because I started in this role in January of this year. But I actually came to Bridgewater for the first time in September 1977 as an undergraduate. Uh, so I like to say that my career started in Bridgewater. Um, hopefully it's going to end in Bridgewater, and, and not tonight or tomorrow morning. <laughs> but you know how these things can go. Um, but so I've seen it change quite a bit, obviously. I mean, my first semester I lived on the hill, then I moved to Stetson Street, then I moved to Spring Street. Um, I was talking to uh, Melinda Tarsi, who is a professor over at the university. She's been helping us on a number of things. We had a call with her last week. She's in Guy Clifford Hall. But Dr. Clifford was my advisor, and, and my career started that I was impatient, so I went to him as a sophomore and said, I have a chance to do an internship at the State House. He said, we don't let sophomores do internships. I said, I really want to do this. And he said, well, you're not going to get any credit, but go ahead and do it. So every Tuesday and Thursday, I would go out to Central Square, wait for the P&B bus, go up to Boston. And that's how I got involved with community service and public service. So for me to come back, and you're saying, well, he must have been a freshman at 12 years old, because it's impossible that he could be that age. And you're right. So I just want to take you quickly through um, what is vision and reality. I'm sure you all have an opinion or thought of what it is. What vision and reality is, it is, Eric alluded to, there's been a lot of planning that's been done for the last 20 plus years in Bridgewater. And in planning, we have a, a saying, there's something called paralysis by analysis. We don't want to do that anymore. Um, last year, the comprehensive master plan was adopted. Some of you probably had some participation in that. The council had public meetings on it. It was thought to be what the community wanted to see. Everything we're going to talk about tonight, everything that is in vision and reality, is from the goals and objectives that you as a community and the council adopted as being priorities of your comprehensive master plan. Everything that you see is in that plan. So as I said, there's been lots of planning done, good planning, uh, both from the town as well as the university. We're really trying to strengthen, not that we had a bad relationship with the university, we've always had a good relationship. I think in the last nine months, we've expanded upon that. We have university students here tonight helping us. We're working with the university on a number of different things, some of which I'll get into in a few minutes. But you know, we're all seeing that the United Auto Workers are in strike in Detroit and how what that impact has. Screenwriters and, and actors are on strike in Los Angeles, what that impact has on those economies. The university is a steady eddy. That they're not going offshore. They're not going out of business. They actually bring a lot of positive. And I'm sure there are there are times that people like those kids. That you know, but we were all kids too. We all did stupid things at one point. And so we're fortunate that that's the kind of industry that we have here. 
the amount of money that they bring in in terms of employment, but there's more that we can do, and there's things that the university would like to see us do, and, and we're going to work on that. So this slide, I think, captures all of the priorities and, that were in the master plan and all of the elements that we're going to hit with respect to vision reality. And I show this because there's an interconnection between everything that we do. Government oftentimes looks at things in a straight line, in silos. We're not doing that. There's a, this is a holistic approach on how you do community development, economic development, engagement, overwhelmed by the amount of people that are here tonight. Um, I worry a lot about things, so like as recently as Sunday, I was worrying about how many people were gonna come. Um, shortly after we opened the doors, I was worried about how many more tables we were gonna need. So this is a good thing, and we're happy to have you, uh, getting your input, helping you understand what we think you are articulating to us is important. You'll see how we connect all of these uh, elements. So when we talk about redevelopment and new development, we want to do that in areas that is going to have the least impact to the community. We're not looking to do new development outside of the downtown area. We want to preserve what open space and agricultural areas that we still have left. We don't have sufficient infrastructure in a lot of those areas in terms of water and sewer. So we're identifying sites that we know are in the downtown area that have access to existing infrastructure but also, and I'll talk about it in a minute, have proximity to an MBTA platform that can be relocated. So the five sites that we've identified is Campus Plaza. Campus Plaza has looked exactly the same, maybe short of a new coat of paint. I, I like to say that McDonald's has not been remodeled since 1977 at least. Um, but that's 13 acres of land that could be reimagined. It's owned by a real estate investment trust out of Maryland. They were looking to sell the property. Now we're in conversations in terms of how that might be redeveloped. The Perkins Foundry site, uh, there is a proposal before the planning board right now. It's been before the planning board for a little over two years, but we're starting to make some progress. We've been working with the developer to redesign portions of it. Uh, we're thinking that that could be approved from the planning board at least by the end of this year. 106 Hale Street is a vacant property that's owned by the university that we think could be redeveloped. The Friendlies Assemblage is a site that we think can be redeveloped. And probably the wild card in this is the technical recycling site on Hale Street. But in our opinion, that's an underutilized site. So a couple of things about the housing market. We hear people say that one thing we don't need is more housing. There is a housing crisis in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The Secretary of Housing was in Bridgewater last week. He shared that the vacancy rate for housing in Massachusetts is less than 1% statewide, lowest in the country. But there's also some really strong economics in, in Bridgewater. If you look at in June of this year, this comes from Realtor.com, the median list price for a home, so half or higher, half or lower, was $650,000. The median sale price was 682. Average time on market was 21 days. Then if we look at the rental market, the same thing. It, there's a challenge to find housing uh, if you're not a college student um, that's affordable. I mean, when we look at housing, we talk about safe, affordable, and decent. Uh, if you spend more than 30% of your income on housing, you're what considered cost burdens. So that puts you in a category that it's difficult that these are why people are working two jobs, three jobs, why kids are in their parents' basements. Um, we have limited options for housing for young professionals, whether that be rental ownership. And we hear quite often there are people 55 and older, which we refer to as aging in place, that are in a single family home. Maybe it's two stories, they'd rather be on one story. Their children are here, their grandchildren are here, they'd like to stay in, in Bridgewater, but there's no housing options for them. So we think there's opportunities for that type of housing. When we look at where housing could be at an area like Campus Plaza, it's not all going to be housing. We want that to be mixed use, but we want it to be a variety of housing. Some of it could be condos, some could be rentals, it could be townhouses. So those are all options that we want to look at. So I talked a little bit about the relocation of the uh, T platform. Is anybody familiar with the term MBTA community? Okay, so for those that don't know, any community in the Commonwealth that has an asset of the MBTA is considered an MBTA community. And to address the housing crisis, 
uh, back in the Baker administration, they introduced legislation that required every community that had an MBA, MBTA asset to come up with an action plan to create more housing that was in proximity to the platform or bus station. Well, the current location of the platform, as many of you know, because you read about it, because it only takes the train from here, is embedded in the back of the campus. The original location of the platform was the Burger King. So what we looked at is, because of the MBTA legislation, on paper, not that we're going to build 1,400 units of housing, but on paper, we have to create the opportunity to have 1,400 units of housing. That zoning needs to be in place by December of 2024. Uh, there are compliance requirements. Some communities initially said, yeah, we're not going to do that. They got a friendly letter from the Attorney General saying, yeah, you are going to do that. So it's not a multiple choice question. There are a number of financial resources available to communities that do meet the compliance. We have gotten a grant from the Governor's Office back in June, so we're redoing our zoning so we can be in compliance. Our goal is to have that done by January 2024, so we're a full 11 months ahead of other communities that may have a plan completed or might need an extension. Um, so there's opportunities for us there. In terms of moving the platform back to the Spring Street lot, obviously we needed to have a conversation with Bridgewater State University first. We did that. Then I met with the MBTA. They are agreeing to have us relocate it. We'll look at different ways that can be funded. Um, but again, this is bringing transportation close to where there's going to be housing. The idea is that if people, if the train is more accessible, if bus tra uh, transportation is more accessible, there's something called microtransit. Uh, the university does some of that now. We do some of that with our seniors. But intermodal transportation was one of the priorities that was identified in the comprehensive master plan. More than 63% of the people that did a survey said that was important to them. So again, everything we're doing is going back to the master plan, but you start to see the connection of the different elements and how those fit together. So I talked about the university and what opportunities there are. The university is the first in the state to be opening the cyber range. Uh, they offer a certificate program in cybersecurity now. Next fall, they'll be offering that a as a major. There is significant growth and job opportunity that is going to come from that cyber program. The cyber range that they have, the closest to that right now is at Rochester Institute of Technology in New York. They're going to be able to have people come in in real time and simulate cyber attacks. That's going to be students learning how to prevent that, but also they'll be bringing in municipalities. Municipalities have been hacked. School systems have been hacked. Hospitals have been hacked. Banks have been hacked. So they're all in real time going to get that kind of training. And we feel very comfortable that there are going to be businesses that are going to come off of that, businesses that want to be here to be part of that, that we can create kind of a co-working space with some of the technology companies in that space, that professors from the university can monetize some of their intellectual capital to support what happens off the campus. I look at this as being, you know, Boston, Cambridge area has biotech, bioscience. Cyber is what is going to be distinguishing Bridgewater, not just Bridgewater, but the region. Uh, it pays above average, 102000 is the average salary for somebody in cyber. The unemployment rate in the cyber industry since 2016 has been zero. So there's a real opportunity for us to bring this clean industry to Bridgewater and to the area. So I wanted to come back to this because, again, you know, we talked about transportation, we talked about housing, job creation, we have a pilot small business program. All of that is economic development, increasing the tax base, and having an opportunity through zoning to give a developer more density gives us an opportunity to get financial contributions back from that developer that we can put into infrastructure. We know that there are issues with respect to infrastructure. We're not ignoring that, but it has to be paid for. Uh, in the last five years, I think we've spent $50 million on water improvements, over $60 million at the wastewater treatment plant. There's probably at least another 50 to $60 million that need, still needs to be spent. We're looking at adding new wells on Vernon Street. That's going to require another 
uh, treatment plant. So we've got to pay for all that. Now there's some state money, there's federal money, but we need to be able to generate additional tax revenue to offset some of that. And because we're an MBTA, MBTA community, there's infrastructure money available through that program that we can use. So we're looking at all of those financial opportunities, job opportunities, but again, I could, I could read to you your comments from the comprehensive master plan. We're touching all of those. I mean, this is, nothing is finalized. The town is not building any new buildings. We're not putting in any new roads through the town common. We're not doing any of that. But we want to create that opportunity for businesses to come. We want to create an opportunity for those businesses that are here to expand and survive. And we want to create more housing opportunities for those young professionals or people that want to downsize so they can stay in the community. If you haven't, and I don't know why you haven't, been to our website for Vision and Reality, probably, in my experience, one of the most comprehensive municipal websites that you'll ever see. Quite honestly, I don't think there's a community in the United States that is taking such a comprehensive and holistic approach to redevelopment and economic development, but we try to answer every question that you have. Every meeting that we've done, there's a YouTube channel, you can see it. I do a white paper every two weeks on different elements, trying to not have to have you comprehend it all in five seconds on a PowerPoint slide, but explaining in more detail what that is. On the off weeks, we send out a newsletter. If you go to the website, you can subscribe. It, telling you what's going on, we're trying to highlight local small businesses. We've been doing a series of small business workshops. We're going to continue to do all of those things. We're paying for all of this up front with another grant that we got through Senator Timothy's office with ARPA money. So, I mean, we're being very smart about how we're doing this. Uh, we're not, we haven't dipped into any, any taxpayer money locally, um, and we're continuing to look at what funding opportunities there are. Our timeline, so here tonight is our community workshop. Next Thursday night, the Old Colony Planning Commission has been working on a corridor study for Route 18 from East Bridgewater to the Middleboro Rotary. Um, they're doing a presentation on what that plan is. There are recommendations for Central Square. You'll learn about those when you go to the downtown circulation station. Um, still have to identify funding. We want to get people's reaction to that. Our traffic engineers and our, our engineers there can answer a lot of the technical questions. Um, Looking to have the zoning approved uh, by the first of uh, January of 2024. Uh, we, as I said earlier, we have to have our MBTA zoning compliance done by 1224. Infrastructure or ongoing evaluation in terms of what we can do to increase our water capacity and improve it. I mean, I sit on an internal work team looking at, and if you go to the infrastructure table, looking at the possibility and the need to do two new wells at High Street. We're in that process already. Uh, we're working with the Department of Corrections to look to see if we can reallocate wastewater. We treat the university's wastewater at the town's plant. If we can reallocate that to the prison in their wastewater treatment plant, that opens up more capacity for us with our existing plant. So we're having those conversations. Um, I expect that, as I said earlier, that hopefully the Perkins Foundry project will be approved by the end of this year. I hope that we see the first new development coming before uh, the town as a result of the new zoning and the form-based code, which is an element of that zoning, in the second quarter of next year. We're continually looking at state and federal funding opportunities. We're also looking at the, the exploration of something called tax increment financing. Real briefly, not to be a real nerd, but it, the way that works is if we had a million dollars of tax revenue coming on an annual basis from Campus Plaza now, as an example, and we got to the acceptable full, full build out of that site, now it's $30 million. That $29 million increment, we can borrow against those funds for other public improvements, whether that be water, sewer, roads, parks. So it's something that there is enabling legislation in the Commonwealth we can do, but we want to make sure that we're looking at all of those options. Because new development is not a bad thing if we do it in a smart way. After the presentation from Bob Rooley, those in attendance broke off into four different stations. Central Square Revitalization, Redevelopment and Housing, Downtown Circulation and Infrastructure. As you heard earlier, there was another group for the Small Business Pilot Program. 
Residents were able to talk to town officials, project members, and the town manager, Michael Dutton, about various phases of this presentation. There was also a chance to provide feedback in those phases with folks being able to write down ideas and concerns to enhance or change different aspects of this plan. You can get much more information on the project, including upcoming events, at BridgewaterVisionToReality.com.